Well, the commons can be talked about at many different levels. I think most basically, it's about shared resources that a given community wants to manage for the collective benefit of everyone. And there's usually an accent, accent on fairness uh, and sustainability of the resource. Uh, so this applies to everything from open source software and Wikipedia and open access scholarly publications to uh, subsistence commons of forestry, forests, fisheries, uh, irrigation water in developing countries, say. It also can apply to urban spaces, people, the, the Reclaim the City movement, people who want urban gardens and uh, spaces for public use instead of private development. So it's really a very diversified uh, movement, really, internationally, where people are choosing to talk about commons as a way to assert certain interests uh, over and against, in particular, the neoliberal economic policy regime which wants to privatize and commodify everything. So the commons is both, in some ways, a political critique, but also a way of managing resources. First of all, the internet is a vast hosting infrastructure for commons, and it's arguably easier to create a commons online than a market. Let's remember that markets require legal contracts, talent recruitment, talent promotion, uh, investment in all sorts of ways. Uh, it's expensive to have a market. But, uh, and many, many important things require that kind of uh, market apparatus. But a commons can be extremely lightweight. It's simply a group of people that say, we want to work together and we trust each other and we have these shared purposes. And many of the more important commons we have today, including Wikipedia, uh, started as little uh, small embryos of people who, as they say in the software world, had an itch to scratch, which over time proved to be um, attractive to many more people. So if you want to enumerate some of the larger classes of commons in the digital space, we have free and open source software. We have the Wikipedia, but also hundreds of wikis. We have collaborative websites and archives. We have open source, uh, uh, open access uh, academic journals, more than 8,000 of them right now. We have the blogosphere, which it might be individually owned as a blog, but it's a community that's interlinked. And one could go on and on trying to suggest the different typologies of commons online. As I say, uh, so much of the attention is focused on markets online that we don't even, I think, appreciate the full value of social collaboration uh, on the internet. I do think that the culture of openness and commons are uh, have consolidated and uh, become self-aware of themselves. And the defeat, or at least the, re the retreat of the ACTA Treaty is an example of that coming together. Such an interesting alliance between uh, companies based on open platforms like Google and Facebook and the rest, uh, industries that are arguably fair use industries that require uh, the building upon what came before, and uh, commoners of all stripes, as well as many social, uh, social actors. I think this is in some ways the massing of a cultural battle that's manifesting itself politically. My point is we need to pay attention to how to construct defensible commons with both legal, technological, and social uh, boundaries around them. Uh, in medieval times in the English commons, they used to have an annual festival of, called Beating the Bounds, where the entire community would have a party and walk the perimeter, and anybody who had put up an enclosure of a wall or a hedge, they'd knock it down. And it was their way of defending their shared resource as a kind of public uh, ritual. Well, I think we need more beating of the bounds of digital commons, and that requires a certain imagination uh, of the sort we saw with free software uh, a generation ago. I think we need to develop these new types of... Uh, of practices if we're going to have more secure digital commons versus simply open platforms that can evolve into behemoth companies uh, setting the terms of governance. I don't mean to be uh, sentimental or uh, 
have rose-colored glasses, but I do think that there is that kind of bottom-up ingenuity will prevail ultimately uh, in trying to counter these things. It's just, it will be a struggle, and it, it is a struggle. And one of the interesting things about the commons is that it's becoming an international phenomenon where people are self-choosing to talk in that framing and discourse. We have free culture people in Brazil, one of the first free culture nations, one might say. We have uh, subsistence farmers in the Philippines, uh, who, many of whom are, there's, there's something called the system for rice intensification, which is like open source agriculture, where they trade advice. We have uh, you know, hackers in Amsterdam, we have uh, uh, reclaimed the city people in Stuttgart. There's a many different manifestations of the commons, and I think they're starting to find each other and understand some of their shared concerns despite very different resources and national traditions. So I think that I see the commons discourse starting to, to uh, grow and become more crystallized as we move forward. And I think to the extent that the digital community of commoners can find these other uh, subsets or tribes of commoners, there can be some fantastic innovation that can occur because there's a lot of environmental problems that could use the ingenuity of digital commoners in uh, helping to understand how we can manage those resources better. So what I'm saying is there's uh, a lot of interesting synergies that are emerging uh, once you see the world through the commons lens.